Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing semantic kernel from Microsoft which allows us to build AI agents inside our .NET application. We're going to be seeing how easy it is to get started with it. So let's jump into it. As we can see here before we can get started, this is semantic kernel that has been released from Microsoft and as we can see here that this article has been released quite recently on the 24th of June and basically it explains what is semantic kernel which means it's a lightweight open source development kit that allows us to build easy AI agents and allows them to integrate within our application specifically with C -sharp. So it serves here as a middleware, we have already discussed how middleware works but basically it injects itself into the middleware level of our application rather than us having to create HTTP requests to OpenAI or to Azure AI services in order for us to actually utilize them. We're going to be seeing how we can implement this step by step inside our code. So within this article here, we can see how easy it is to start utilizing it. It explains how it is enterprise ready and how we can actually utilize it to have a full automation process, business process behind it and how we can get started. So what I have here is I have a sample web application, which is basically the out of the box one whenever we create it, which gives us a weather forecast. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be transforming this into a smart application, which integrates semantic kernel with it and basically we're going to be connecting with OpenAI ChatGPT 4.0 in order for us to get some of the information and basically make it a bit more dynamic. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go to my terminal and I want to install a package. So the first package that I want to add is going to be .NET add package Microsoft.semantic kernel. This will take a few seconds to install and now we can see it has been installed successfully. To verify it I can go to my CS Proj and we can see it here which is version 1.15. Okay, great. So now that we have this ready, what I want to do is I'm going to create a section inside my app settings where I'm going to put my OpenAI key that I have we create. So I'm just going to add a section here called it AI. Then I'm going to get another section called OpenAI and then another one which is going to be my API key. I have already created this. So I'm going to add my key here of video. So now that my key has been added, what I want to do is I'm going to go to my program.cs and I'm going to start adding some information here. So the first thing that I want to do is inside my builder services, I'm going to add builder.services add kernel and this basically will inherit from the Microsoft semantic kernel and basically have it available for me inside my application. The second is I'm going to add the OpenAI service or basically the AI service that I want to use. We can use Azure, Server, Azure AI services or OpenAI or even Google's one but I'm going to stick with OpenAI because I have the key for it. So builder.services.add OpenAI chat completion and basically here what I want to do is I'm going to specify my GPT mode. So I'm going to put GPT-40 and then what I want to do is I'm going to specify my key which is going to be builder.configuration and then I'm going to pass where does it live inside my app settings and this is going to be AI, open AI and API. Great. So all I, this is all I need to do inside my program.cs in order for me to inject the open AI service inside there. So we can see it's pretty straightforward and easy to the point. Even here if I want to change to utilize GPT 3.5 Turbo I can do that and if I want to add additional configuration but this is just a quick start guide so I don't really want to delve into a lot of custom customization right now. So now once we have done this, I'm going to go to my weather forecast and I'm going to be updating this to take advantage of the kernel. So first of all, I'm going to remove all of this because I don't really need it. And we're going to see why. I'm going to remove this, the name. I'm going to give it a route. I'm going to say it's going to be get weather. And instead of returning a list, I'm just going to return a new weather. Actually, we'll make it in a result for result equal. And we'll change this, this. Okay. And then I'm going to return result. And we're going to put okay and the result. Great. I'm going to change this. So I'm going to make it async task by action result. We get here. So now I have done this. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to abstract the or basically make the variable for a temperature its own variable. So I'm going to put var temp equal and then I'm going to inject it here. And this is going to be the first now where I'm going to be basically using uh, chat GPT. So what I want to do here is I'm going to inject kernel and I'm going to call it kernel. And instead of relying on the summaries, what I want to do is I want to ask chat GPT in order for it to give me a summary based on the weather. So all I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to say, so I'm going to update this to actually await kernel dot Invo prompt async. We know it's going to return a string and here I'm going to send my question which is going to be please provide a short description of the temperature and here I'm going to specify the temperature and I'm going to say it's going to be in Celsius. So now let's try it out. I'm just going to run my application now. Let's open it in a web browser and we can see we can have we have it here and now if I try to execute as we can see I got a 
nice description a temperature of 28 degrees generally considered warm etc etc so we can see here so if i execute and we got a different random temperature we can see here i got 35 and basically this is another short description and if i go back to my terminal here and the output what i can see is i can see the request that's been going to open ai as well i can see the amount of token that every single request is actually utilizing in order for me to get the response and here we can see that it's actually going to open ai and getting the information rather than trying to run it locally so all of that basically allows me to directly communicate with open ai without actually having to create a rest response a rest request uh, uh, process the response and do all of the heavy lifting that i need, usually need to do so let's take this up a step further and we're going to add another endpoint here and basically we're going to make it as a post so http post and we'll give it a root we'll call it ask a question and we're going to make it public async task i action result again ask a question we're gonna call it and it's gonna also take the prompt so it's gonna take that kernel and we're gonna take a string here as a question and now what i want to do is simply just ask a question so i'm gonna get result equal away kernel invoke prompt async it's gonna return a string here and then here i wanna ask the question that i got from the user and then i'm gonna return the response as simple as that so now if we run this and we go back to my web browser refresh you can see here i have ask a question try it out my question is let's say how to make pasta so we can see see my request being executed and now i got my response back we can see this is the full recipe of how to make pasta and it gave it to me in the spot and if i go back to my rider here you can see the tokens that has been utilized to get this information and basically the duration of the request etc etc so within this we can see how easy it is right now to actually integrate OpenAI within our application using semantic kernel we can see how we can directly jump start our development so it does not really require us a lot of effort in order for us to do this we're going to relying heavily on the kernel library that's available or the new get package which is available in order for us to do so this is the first video that i'm planning to around this i'm gonna i'm planning to add additional functionality and basically explore more the semantic kernel if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you have any clarifications as well if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buy me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day